Hey, Celtic fans, welcome to another edition of the Celtics Talk Radio video chat available to you on the YouTube.com and, of course, Celtics Talk Radio Facebook channel. This is episode 58, where we will be discussing it at the end of the Boston Celtics season. Uh, Celtics, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, have their season come to an end for the third time in four years in the Eastern Conference Finals as they lost this past Sunday night, 125 to 113 at the hands of the Miami Heat in game six, losing the series four games to two, and that matchup now sets up a matchup of the Los Angeles Lakers and the Miami Heat in the NBA Finals, giving the Los Angeles Lakers a chance now to tie the Boston Celtics for the most NBA championships of all time in NBA history without the Celtics having a chance to defend themselves to try and remain in sole possession. So pretty much it is the Celtics' last bragging rights that Celtic fans have over the Lakers could very well end within the next two weeks pretty much thanks to the fact that the Celtics could not get past the Miami Heat. So it was pretty much a crazy game six overall, one that you could pretty much say the Celtics only in the fourth quarter had the lead and looked like they were going in the right direction before finally they self-destructed it. We saw the team go back to the same type of issues that we saw them have in their game one, game two, and game four losses which was hero ball. A lot of the top players on the Celtics squad decided to start taking a bunch of threes, step back threes, a one dribble, one pass, and take a shot. The ball movement completely came to a halt, and the Celtics went an extended period in the fourth quarter without a single basket made, while Miami went on a nice run for them in order to put the game away and clinch the Eastern Conference title. Now, Danny Ainge and the team with that have a lot of questions that have to be filled going into next season from do they force Jason Tatum to play for them for basically $10 million by executing the team option on him and make him wait for next season, basically, you know, next, or should I say next year, before they give him a max contract knowing that you could take Taylor off, or do they give him that max contract this season, in this case, in hopes of guaranteeing that he takes it and not risk him hitting free agency next summer. You also have the fact that technically the Celtics roster is likely going to have to stay the same because the Celtics, regardless of if they give Taylor the max contract or not, are not going to have any money available to improve the roster. And so how is Danny Ainge going to do anything to help create a second bench unit? So you know, we'll discuss all of that, but let's get your opening thoughts on this series overall and the fact that you and me pretty much said from the get-go, from the beginning of this season, that this Celtic squad with now not one, not two, but three max contract players and a star, a rising star in Jason Tatum that everybody was saying is the next top star in this league, meaning that you will soon to have four max contract players once he gets that offer. You were in a situation where technically, unless you face Philly or Milwaukee and the NBA proved that they wanted those two teams to face each other and so you were screwed in a potential playoff matchup like you've been screwed in the past when facing a LeBron James-led team, and you know, fans, what type of screwing I'm talking about. Unless you faced one of those two squads, there is no excuse to lose to anybody else in the Eastern Conference and not get to the NBA Finals. Sure enough, Ibra, our worst hopes basically came to fruition, and this team failed for the third time in four years in a matchup where we can basically say they should have came out victorious. And now we have to deal with fans pretty much giving them a pass exactly what you and me felt was going to happen that we say shouldn't be happening. 
Yeah, and uh, what is um, the worst part of, uh, I mean, worse than the Celtics, um, uh, worse uh, than the Celtics uh, don't make finals is uh, that Los Angeles Lakers uh, are in the finals and, <laughs> excuse me, um, most likely they are going to win the finals. In fact, I'm going to bet with every single fan out there that uh, is writing me that, that Miami Heat is going to win the title. I would love to. I would be ecstatic uh, to. Um, but, 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 but. Uh, I said alongside you that uh, since uh, since uh, the bubble was officially opened, that the Lakers will win the title for three reasons that are not basketball reasons. LeBron James to catch Michael Jordan for GOAT. Uh, that story is getting on my nerves very, very much. But NBA cares about it because it is attracting too much stupid fans and they are living from that. And they will make this story more juice, juicy if uh, Lebrick James wins another title, and he will. Number two, Lakers to catch the Celtics. It is not a uh, secret that uh, Lakers alongside Heat and New York teams, uh, th those are uh, baby uh, pets of um, the NBA ex-commissioner Stern and now Adam Silver, and uh, they were doing uh, everything possible after the end of dynasty in Chicago to create the new dynasty in Los Angeles uh, at the beginning of 2000, uh, year 2000, and they did. Uh, I mean, Fakers won the five titles in uh, the first decade um, of uh, 21st century. Um, and uh, they were favored from medias, from fans, from television, from newspapers, from electronic medias, from officials, from NBA office. Uh, they have been given practically everything. They have been allowed to form super teams when, whenever they want, however they want, uh, except, uh, except uh, that uh, banned uh, CP3 trade. Uh, I'm not sure what happened in in this case. Uh, CP tra uh, Chris Paul trade. I think uh, this was something personal between Los Angeles Lakers and the commissioner. But it doesn't matter right now. The reason number two is because uh, NBA wants uh, Celtic uh, Lakers to overcome. Uh, the Celtics and to become the the the, franch the best franchise of all the time. And sadly, uh, the Fakers will succeed it because the Celtics, from my perspective, Daniel, because I'm not smoke smoking some crack like all the other fans. Uh, so uh, it seems like you and I must start to do some drugs like the other fans are doing, obviously. Uh, to believe that the Celtics are going to win the title in the next five years, you know. Um, but because we're not smoking crack, uh, we do not believe that the Celtics, the Celtics are going to win the title anytime soon. And sadly, the Lakers will surpass the Celtics in, I, I think, the next year, 2021. The Lakers will be the franchise that is having 18 banners and the Celtics seven, will stay at 17. Um, for me, this, this will be the disaster. The most horrible, I mean, the most horrible thing that could happen, my nightmare will come true. Now, the third reason is because Kobe Bryant died and NBA alongside Lakers, they want to dedicate um, the title 
too late Kobe Bryant. I tried to explain that to dickhead fans around the web, including Balkan fans, they were persuading me that Miami Heat will have the chance in the finals and that um, um, everything is open on the paper. I mean, please, please, guys. We can abandon conspiracy theories. theories. We can clearly, clearly talk about only basketball court. Now, Daniel, you're a smart man. Let's compare the level of talent and experience in uh, Miami Heat roster and um, Los Angeles Lakers roster and the talent and the talent. I heard from one fan, believe me or not, he said that LeBron James is not talented as a player. I told him, I don't know what LeBron James is, but I would like to have one of LeBron James at my team, you know, every time. That kind of player. 12 LeBron Jameses in the Celtics every single time. Now, let's compare the top three players from the Heat and from the Lakers. Let's compare Jimmy Butler, Bema Debayo, Goran Dragic with LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Rajon Rondo. Who do you take? Who do you think is having more talent between those two groups? Well, pretty much, man, you got to be a fool to not believe stuff like this happens. Look at any other sport, you know, that has had somebody either retire, that people basically either had a ton of respect for, or that they had a historic career, or that they died as well, in this case. You know, a situation where technically, you know, a situation where, like for example, think of what I believe his name was Ray Lewis of the Baltimore Ravens. Then he, he, he announces he's going to retire. It results in his team getting a special treatment in many people's opinion. And they knock off both Peyton Manning and the Colts and Tom Brady and the Patriots in the same season, in the same playoffs, should I say, particularly, and they win a Super Bowl. The only Super Bowl that man won in his entire career, pretty much. He, go, he gets to go out on top. This isn't a situation, ladies and gentlemen, where we're saying, basically, you know, it's an issue of, you know, Hey, it's a guarantee. We're simply saying that, ladies and gentlemen, it happens. And with somebody like Kobe Bryant, that basically is one of the most historic figures in the NBA, somebody who basically played for the mo one of the most historic franchises, some would say it's more historic than the Celtics because of the fact that the Celtics is where a lot of their history and a lot of their success came back way back in the 80s and 70s, other than that one championship of Garner Allen and Pierce together in 08, our franchise has, that hasn't done a damn thing, really, in making any success when it comes to winning titles, while the Lakers have continued to dominate, so people continue to basically go the route of literally looking at them and basically saying they're the high standard in the NBA. And then on top of it, Eva, look at the player. That's the next thing. Especially at during these times. That's the other issue, Eva. You're in the middle of a, of a situation with this country. Black Lives Matter. LeBron James is kind of leading the, how would you say, he's leading the charge when it comes to the NBA players trying to step in and trying to force change and trying to force the NBA's hands 
to get involved and basically give the players and the you know the the, the you know black people what they want pretty much. And now you got him playing in the NBA Finals. You don't think the best storyline, the best way to celebrate, is going to be him walking away victorious with an NBA championship until he's on getting an NBA championship. Knowing that back, think about it, Ingram. Other than Bill Russell, back then, how many guys basically that played for the Celtics were black compared to the Lakers? The top player for the for the Celtics in this case, back in the eighties, was was Bird, and he was white. While it was Magic Black for the for the Lakers. So you got many of that stuff that everybody's also trying to consider. The issues in our country right now play a role as well. Who is more likely to basically get a situation where the story? By the way. By the way, Daniel, uh, because of the color, uh, I know that uh, maybe somebody will hate me for saying that when you mentioned this, Larry Bird was underrated as a player throughout uh, his whole career because of uh, his color. Uh, he was called uh, the best white guy that ever played the game, and I agree. But uh, uh, he was uh, kind of... Um, underrated in the GOAT discussion, you know, uh, right now where LeBron James is um, playing uh, pretty much as his prime and he's going to surpass Larry Bird in number of tit titles, I'm sure. Uh, so, I mean, the guys are even underappreciate. I mean, um, the public, general public, uh, underappreciate Larry Bird uh, even more, uh, but um, uh, I don't think that the color helped Larry Bird. On the contrary, it was the burden for him because uh, NBA is uh, pretty much uh, black guy league as we know it. Please go on. But like I said, I'm simply saying that technically. This is a time where, if you look at the two teams, who's, who's, which team is it going to benefit more if their top star walks away victorious and basically manages to help make a bigger impact in this country? Jimmy Butler or LeBron James? Who do we need spending more time right now putting money into efforts to kind of help the issue in this country? Which one of them do we see spending more time but taking the social media, trying to basically help, basically, basically try to tell people, vote, you know, help us basically get Trump out, yada, yada, yada. Which one is it? It's LeBron, obviously, in this case, you know? So, literally, I think everything is set up that they're guaranteed, like you said, Igor, if there's any season where it's been guaranteed for a certain team to win, it's this season. So LeBron will again, win it again. Daniel, you and I are offering, like I offered, the bets to those uh, hit believers. With your money, do not just say empty words. If you're sure, in Miami Heat, we will give you odds, and you put your money, we will put our money to Miami Heat winning the title. And do not tell us after Miami Heat loses, loses the finals, oh, we knew it. Or Miami Heat lost, but they had chance. They didn't have chance. They don't have chance. Uh, please go on. Sorry for interrupting you again. Yeah, so that's all, uh, you know, really I have to say. This whole thing, everything that's taking place from basically Kobe Bryant's death in this case to the, basically the roster and how the, how the two rosters are set up, to the historic, you know, the historical impact of what it would mean for a Lakers win and a win for LeBron, to what's going on in our country and the impact it would have if LeBron, who's the biggest supporter of Black Lives Matter in the NBA, in my opinion, and the biggest anti-Trump person I think you can find in the NBA as well, at least one of them, all of it is going perfectly in favor of, of him basically in the, in the Lakers winning, which is why, you know, it's a guaranteed win. Celtic fans, unfortunately, you not caring about the Celtics. You, you, you not caring enough about the Celtics basically making the NBA Finals. 
also means you did not care enough about us staying ahead of us in, in this case. Another reason why we're there, I'm not going to watch a damn second of these NBA finals in this case. And I, I, me too. Me neither. Me neither. Exactly. There's no me neither. damn second. You know, they're going to try to make some storylines out of it. Oh, LeBron versus Pat Riley. How does LeBron look going at it with his fellow, you know, owner in this situation? Him versus Sportsman, the fellow coach in this case. We all know those two things don't mean a damn thing in this situation when it comes to what's going on in the court in this case. Everything that's going on elsewhere in this situation is really all that matters in this situation. And it's all been set up from the get-go. Everything's been set up to make sure this ends up happening in this case. So Absolutely. Gentlemen, and if you if you if you don't see you're one idiot, excuse me for insulting. But uh, if you who cannot see it, you're one simp simply said you're one idiot. Yeah. People want to talk about the fact that it happens in the NFL. Every time the Patriots win, oh, the big shoot it, the NFL wants them to win. Well, look at the situation with the, with the NBA in this case. And in this, in this case, it will, NBA is worse because the NBA, you have the referees who can give guys like LeBron and his team 40 freaking free throws compared to a team like Miami, they can give him only 15 and yet the score can finish 115, 113, and you find out, oh, LeBron's team wins by only two, but yet they took 25 free throws more than Miami. What would have happened if the, if the free throws would have been the same in this case? Maybe Miami ends up winning it. How do we know? How do I know? Because how many times did that happen to us in there when we had Dinah, Allen, and Pierce? And we went at it with LeBron, with Wayne and Bosch, and Miami took double or triple the free throws. And yet our guys only lost by one or two possessions in this. People, people, people do not get it, Daniel. They first do not understand how NBA is working. And you and I have been two years from uh, last two years spent explaining to the fans how NBA is working. And they, they still do not believe in it, despite they are seeing that with their own eyes. So practically they are denying reality. So they do not get how MBA is working. On the contrary, uh, they are, they are uh, 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 still talking about basketball things, uh, you know, talent, uh, matchups, that kind of stuff. So they act like this finals uh, is going to be played on a vacuum, you know, in some ne neutral court, just like in 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 mars and that the officials will be the martians or ets you know they act like that so that's not going to happen i have one information from them the officials will be still those crooked buyers uh tony brothers uh mike davis scott foster and all the other beautiful officials that you love throughout the whole year. So it is going to be played uh, in Disney World, which is Miami court, as somebody said, but it would not mean one damn thing because everything is predestined uh, to, uh, to uh, everything is uh, directed to, 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 to finish with, uh, my, I mean, um, to finish with uh, LeBron James and the Lakers winning the title. And this is very simple. I, this is very simple. Do you want something to say before I go to a quote from our friend Rich A. Jensen? Uh, he described the situation very, very good. Okay. Uh, our friend and co I mean, uh, guest at our shows, um, Rich A. Jensen, uh, uh, of course, he said that uh, I'm trying to open uh, the article at my browser. This is why it is taking me too long. Uh, he described uh, the situation, Daniel, uh, very, very good. 
and he actually agreed with us, uh, which is uh, telling you, which is telling you uh, that uh, when the person applies logic, you are getting the same conclusion. You know, when you are not biased, when you are not crooked, when you extract your emotions and feelings, you are getting the, to the same conclusion which is not uh, strange. Uh, quote, Rich Jensen, uh, Red's Army. Rich A. Jensen. It's true, man, for many, a Celtics run to the finals this year should have been gravy. After last season fiasco, the consensus was that the Celtics were going to take serious step, step backwards coming into the next season. Uh, I never bought the consensus. I viewed the losses of Horford and Rozier basically offsetting each other, and the exchange of Irving for Walker has been even the trade. In short, if 2019 Celtics had reasonable title expectations, then the same standards apply to the 2020. Uh, and then it right up until two weeks ago, that made me look rather president. But now here we are. Quote, Boston didn't just lose a series. Um, they lost a golden opportunity to win a title, an opportunity that is far from guaranteed to present itself again next season. Yes, the Celtics will be in the mix for sure for the finals the next season as well. But so will the Heat, the Nets, Indiana, the Philly, the Bucks, and likely at least one team that we are not talking about now will make off-season splash that will change their title trajectory in a positive way. And here is why I am pissed. Jay Crowder, Rajon Rondo, and Kelly Olenek are in the finals. The Los Angeles Lakers, who spent the most of the last decade making stupid moves and doubling down on them, have returned to the finals before Boston. The Miami Heat, who eliminated the Celtics the last time they had the realistic shooter championship, ironically uh, because uh, they had no bench uh, to speak of, they returned to the finals before Boston, and after LeBron left the team, uh, absolute in disaster 2014. That, me that means that Miami rebuilding is more successful than the Celtics rebuilding. Um, Pat Riley and Spolstra won the championship in 2013 and seven years later they will have the chance to win another. For much credit Assange deserves for assembling a young core that has guys who have brilliant careers ahead of them, and for as much credit as Stevens deserves for getting the most of his players, the most out of his players, it's undeniable fact that the Lakers and Heat are better than the Celtics and ahead of us. And that pisses me off. It pisses me off because the bumbling matters of Lucky Sperm Club in Los Angeles were able to trade off the legacy of their old man and the reputation he gave the Lakers for, for a couple of moves that practically ensured the Lakers will continue to have a reputation as championship organization, regardless of how stupid their management is. And we would like to think that the rules are the same for everybody, but somehow the Lakers can spend most of the decade making moves as stupid and those made by Sacramento Kings without paying um, a uh, uh, commensurate price. Then you got Riley and Spolstra, who did that Ainge and Stevens were trying to do both more quickly and effectively. And I'm going to level you. Uh, I really can't say which one of those things pisses me more. I haven't followed Chicago White Sox closely for years. Having rooting interest in team uh, owned by Jerry Reinsorf, um, etc., etc. The Celtics. Uh, we tell ourselves did things the right way. They went about roster construction and they have goal 18 banner. They hired Stevens 
instead of pulling from ranks of the NBA coaching trade mill because Ainge knew the game changed and the new ideas were needed. Um, they made dozens of personal moves uh, and always had one uh, thing in mind, Banner 18. There are 30 teams in the NBA, and in theory, all of them want to win a title. Most of them are managed by the guys who are satisfied with, with competence. Um, so they coach, they trade, they draft, they sign agents, and uh, not winning at all. They retire. That's not uh, the guys uh, enjoy losing. However, they are um, diving in mediocrity. So we know Rajon Rondo is not wired that way. Jay Crowder, not wired that way. Pat Riley, not wired that way. LeBron, not wired that way. We know Eric Spolstra and Kelly Olenek, they are not wired that way. Now, when you look at the Celtics roster and front office, about whom can you say um, that for certain? On the team, uh, the only player who seemed to be a um, uh, winner is Marcus Smart. Uh, Tatum and Brown are driven to be good uh, as they can be. Uh, Walker and Hayward have um, high basketball IQ. Williams uh, um, and the rest of bench mob uh, raw potential. And Stevens is the only guy I can imagine uh, taking this loss personally. As far as coaching staff and the front office at any age, I can say for certain is the one guy in that group who takes losing personally. He has an uh, affable personality and uh, downplays his roles in affairs. But make no mistakes, behind the scenes, um, he hates, hates to lose. And for Ainge, it has to sting you uh, that three guys he traded are all in the mix for the ring, while the fourth guy uh, he let walk also has a show, shoot. What about Stevens? I want to say at first, uh, the way the team faded down the stretch again, the way the team once again failed to live up to the expectation, um, uh, regardless of the rest of us thought uh, was possible, is going to eat is going to eat at him. Uh, like Ainge, I hope he reflects on the fact that um, four guys he coached have reached a level of uh, competition that he hasn't gotten yet. We talk about how much Stevens is able to get from his players. And in comparison to everybody, but Spolstra, he looks brilliant. But Stevens uh, can't look at the result of uh, this series without realizing that um, he was outcoached. Yes, arguably, he was outcoached in 2019 as well by Mike Badenholzer. But his mistakes last year were not all himself. Um, Stevens' failures as a coach 2019 were more about letting players' um, dissatisfaction shimmering without addressing it um, more than specific matchup uh, mistakes. His failure in 2020. Uh, came head-to-head -head with the coach Spolstra and even Nurse. Last year, when the Celtics lost to the Bucks, I talk about Larry Bird is still irritated by the way the team quit on Bill Finch in 1983. This team is young, incredibly young, the least experienced team in the NBA. But as Larry Bird knows, as every generation X Celtics fans knows, nothing is guaranteed. Land Bias and Reggie Lewis died. Kendrick Perkins blew out his knee. Jeff Green um, has outrageous uh, heart conditions. Isaiah Thomas has structural defect in his hip. Gordon Hayward snapped his ankle uh, in half. Nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed, remember Celtics fans. Nothing is carved in stones, including Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown becoming superstars for decade and plus. The Celtics had and I repeat, had golden opportunity last year that will not repeat most likely the next year. One that squandered because too many guys couldn't put the team ahead of their own interests because their young guys thought that being great means not having to put in the work. This year, the Celtics had gotten golden opportunity. They were good enough um, that they could have breezed throughout the Eastern Conference as easily as he did. 
that they didn't uh, that they didn't is squarely on their shoulders and i hope that bothers those guys because it bothers me plenty plenty daniel nothing more that we can add on the story uh, you would say right well, there's nothing more you and me said enough when it comes to the situation this season in the group and on the radio show and other chats. You can't be guaranteed that basically next season everybody's going to remain healthy. You can't be guaranteed in this case that the future of, J of Jason Tatum is going to be in Boston, as I just mentioned. The team can basically force him to play for next season for $10 million. But you do that, you risk pissing the, man off, pissing the man off. And he could definitely end up pitching you the following season if he basically ends up getting an offer somewhere else. I tell you, Abel, I think Jason Tatum, if he gets an offer from the Los Angeles Lakers after the ball leaves, he's likely to take it in this case because he wants to follow footsteps of Kobe Bryant, his mentor in this case, you know? So I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if Tatum ends up ditching you at some point in the near future in this case. We all know... In five years. Yep. In five years, in his prime. I wouldn't be surprised in this case if we end up seeing at some point Gordon Hayward gone. It could be in a matter of weeks, a matter of months. If the Celtics, and I think technically that's probably what's going to have to happen, if the Celtics want any chance of improving the roster, you know, you got the issue of Marcus Smart, who's going to want to get more money, and if Danny Ainge basically gives all the money away to guys like Kemba, Hayward, Tatum, and Brown, it's going to be difficult for him to try and give a major contract to Marcus Smart on top of it and still get a decent bench. So there's a lot, basically, and as you said, you mentioned a few teams, you know, you still got to consider the Toronto Raptors that are still going to be a threat. You know, they really eliminate the team. They don't have to lie in the circles now with the Los Angeles Clippers. So they're still going to be a threat for the, for the future years in this case. The 76ers, obviously, as you mentioned, you know, they you got by them, but they didn't have all the best. They are 76ers are hiring coach Brad Stevens, and they're going to try to make a splash trade one of uh, their top two guys probably in order to get uh, another star and to start over. So do not uh, count out the Sixers. Yeah, yeah, and on top of it, they're considering, you know, they're looking for a new coach. You know, they've discussed uh, Tyron Moore. They're just, you know, they, they've got the head coach, Doc Rivers, basically now over there talking with him today. So you never know basically what can end up happening. But I'm simply saying, but the Eastern Conference, Next season, Abel, this year you are guaranteed, that's the truth, guaranteed to finish in the top four, so long as you took care of your business. Only, only thanks to the circumstances, the bubble, not all, all players participated. You didn't have Kawhi Leonard at the East. Um, uh, Yanis Antetokounmpo eliminated thanks to his crappy supporting cast. Uh, Kevin Durant out, uh, Kyrie Irving out, Kawhi Leonard out. Uh, you have the clear uh, 76ers injured um, uh, injury for um, Bre uh, Simmons, and they were out. So you had the clear, clear um, uh, path uh, to the NBA Finals. You have the team. Uh, that you you was favorite against Miami Heat and you lose and no matter how positive you are you cannot say that this is the success for the Boston Celtics for Atlanta Hawks maybe it would be the success coming and losing in three Eastern Conference for Boston Celtics this is not the success and uh, the next year the people are crazy uh, I mean, I have Keith Smith, Daniel. Keith Smith believes that the Celtics will be better without making any moves. And he practically said that the Celtics don't have to make uh, significant moves and that um, uh, 
they will improve every uh, pl player of um, every player from um, the Celtics roster are young and they will improve, uh, which is the truth. Um, and that he cannot see the other team uh, to improve significantly to upset us. I I mean, I said great. If, if if that happens, that the Celtics are in the finals next year without making major moves, I will personally congratulate Keith Smith for having the vision and for having the right view ahead of him. But I cannot see that happening, Daniel. For example, take Brooklyn Nets. If the Nets are adding uh, Kevin Durant, which is, uh, I mean, 10 times. Uh, I, I saw the picture, like, 10 times all all star, uh, eight times all NBA player, a um, couple of times NBA champion, MVP of the finals, uh, the best scorer of um, uh, the NBA for how many times, top five players in the NBA if he's healthy and in form. Uh, they are also adding, uh, I'm talking about Los Angeles, um, I mean Brooklyn Nets, pardon. They are also adding uh, Kyrie Irving who is top 10 player. He was in the second All-NBA team last year with the Celtics. So um, they're adding uh, top five and top 10 player. And um, I mean, um, they have talent around. Uh, they, they have uh, Harris uh, Lavert that I rate very high. They have um, Jordan. Uh, they have um, that guy from college uh, f f forward. I mean, they have uh, pretty much from Atlanta. Uh, they have pretty decent talent uh, around that may play off this season without Kyrie Irving and without, um, uh, without uh, Kevin Durant. So uh, who do you think will, uh, who do you think will, um, uh, I mean, if those players are committed to the game, we don't know that yet, you know, if they don't go to protest elsewhere, of course, um, the Nets will be top three teams the next year, you know. Um, and of course, uh, it depends on how their coach will manage the team, but uh, I assume it will be pretty much okay uh, because the talent is, um, the talent is uh, without shadow of a doubt. Now, Yanis and Tukompo, wants to stay in Milwaukee, Daniel, if they make more moves. That means if Giannis stays, Milwaukee will get at least one all-star and more backup players, and Milwaukee will want to be top four teams. That is second team. Then uh, we mentioned Philadelphia. Philadelphia with Doc Rivers and one more all-star and better bench. This is a different note. Indiana will take the step uh, backwards. Uh, you certainly have the Celtics, but the Raptors will not go away. I heard also the rumor mill that uh, our friend Masai Ujiri wants to make some moves to get Toronto Raptors at the top of the Eastern Conference. So the next year, it's more likely that you uh, uh, will not have one or two teams uh, as a competition, but five of them. So how can anybody say without making any moves, the Celtics can make it to the finals? I mean, with some magic, maybe, you know, if you are a wizard from O's and if you have the magical stick, uh, then maybe, uh, and you touch, you know, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart and everybody from the Celtics, you touch them with the magical stick and they become 10 times better players than today, then yes, the Celtics can win the championship that way, but it is happening only in fairy tales, you know. Only in fairy tales, um, you know, uh, the people are growing overnight, and um, you know, uh, uh, magic is happening only in fairy tales. I don't do not believe in fairy tales. I'm old enough, so the next season, I I can see the Celtics losing in the second round. And the Celtics fans must be prepared on that. Any other uh, thing to add? Because we have to address the Gordon Hayward nonsense uh, rumor mill. And we have to address 
at uh, Celtics fans and media trying to spin this disaster. Yeah. Trust me, we'll be guaranteed able to make the playoffs, but we could easily be a first round exit, in my opinion, because next year this team is not guaranteed to finish in no top four in the Eastern Conference. If you look at the teams this year, you were guaranteed because really there was only four super teams overall at the very beginning of the season, and sure enough, none of them ended up being the ones going to the NBA Finals. Miami's the one going in this case because each of those teams either eliminated each other or suffered some sort of injury that basically took them out of the mix. I forgot, Daniel, I forgot Miami. I forgot Miami. This is the sixth team. Miami. Miami will be better. Yeah, so, you know, I'm simply saying that next season, you're not guaranteed to finish in the top four. You're not guaranteed to have home court in the first round in this case. And so, certainly... Im Daniel, imagine you have, you have the strong Miami. Imagine if um, Giannis Tukompo stays. You have strong Milwaukee, rejuvenated. Then you have the strong Nets. Uh, then you have, uh, which team did I mention? You got Toronto, you got Toronto, Philadelphia, you got Miami, yes. you, said you got Indiana. Nets, 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 Nets. Miami, uh, Miami, uh, 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 Bucks, Miami, Bucks, Nets as a main competition, if they're strong, plus a couple of other teams like Philadelphia and Toronto will will try to make a splash moves, like Rich said, right? Exactly. So next year you're not guaranteed to be no top four team in the Eastern Conference. In this case, if anything, you could easily fall to the to the lower half of the Eastern Conference between the fifth and eighth seed. And if you fall into one of those matchups versus, let's say, Brooklyn or Milwaukee. Or even Miami again, if you, after what we saw this round, you're likely to lose in round one. Absolutely. And um, uh, the, th the, the two things that um, we need to address, or, or the three things, um, more, more talking what, uh, what uh, is missed um, in this year's team on our show Saturday. Uh, People, I mean, the athletics, um, Jared Weiss, he started the rumor mill about Gordon Hayward uh, that could be traded for, um, for Indiana Pacers all-star or ex-all-star player Vitor Oladipo. Um, and I didn't see... Is this exactly his idea from Jared Weiss or just fans' imagination? Fans are also including Miles Turner for some reason into that mix. And they're proposing Boston Celtics to give up um, Romeo Langford, Gordon Hayward, and uh, three first rounders for Miles My Turner and uh, Gordon Hayward. Now, a couple of informations. Uh, according to some reports, uh, Gordon Hayward will likely opt in his last fourth uh, contra maximum contract year. So, Gordon Hayward, I repeat, will likely to opt in his last uh, fourth year of maximum contract. Uh, what does that mean? Well, that means that since you have given Kemba Walker maximum contract, if I'm correct, four years, 141 millions. Since you have been given Jalen Brown four years, how much it was? 107 million stop. Uh, contract to Jalen Brown. Since you have been given, since you will give Jason Tatum five years, 211 millions, the, uh, <clears throat> the largest contract 
in the in the Celtics history. Since you have Smart next season, if I'm correct, Daniel, in his fourth year of contract, the next season. So uh, those four guys that I mentioned, you will have Tatum Max, Walker Max, Hayward Max uh, contract next year, and Jalen Brown 12% close to Max deal. So you will have smart as middle contract, like uh, between 15 and 20 millions, but um, four guys are occupying uh, like 80% of your salary cap space, okay? And the fifth guy in Marcus Smart uh, would also want to jump, uh, I mean, similar deal like Jalen Brown, okay? Like um, four years, 100 or something. So you're in the tax paying territory and you are not the true contender. This is insane. This is insane. This is perfect example, Daniel, of bad, bad management. You practically chain yourself to the wall. Um, and the contracts of Kemba Walker and Gordon Hayward are so bad that it would be a miracle to move. Or to correct myself, not exactly miracle, but you will have to, um, I mean, add young players and the picks to get rid of Gordon Hayward's contract. If you want to get rid of Gordon Hayward's contract, and we don't have any inclinations that Boston Celtics want to trade Gordon Hayward. I repeat, from the athletics, those are not the rumors uh, Oladipo for Hayward. Those are only speculations that are coming from established journalists from the Athletic, Jared Weiss, we had him on the show, but those are not confirmed informations. The Celtics are not trying to trade Gordon Hayward. On the contrary, Gordon Hayward will likely to opt in the fourth year of maximum contract. Now, assuming that Gordon Hayward opts out of the contracts, you know, opts out of the contract. I must find the I must find uh, the exact informations uh, to be precise because you know me that I want to be precise uh, to explain that uh, 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 to the fans. Um, sending out Hayward in theory, yes, but it gets really messy. In that, that scenario, I'm assuming Boston brings in a player via sign and trade option. That would then hard cap the Celtics at upfront. Hard cap the Celtics sign and trade automatically will hard cap the Celtics via upfront, and you're not able to cross the apron and make other moves, okay? And they are close enough to the hard cap that it gets really tricky. It will need mathematically uh, and, ha and cap gymnastics. Just running this back because it keeps coming. If Havertz opt out, Boston could sign, insert any free agent you want in this place. Guys, Celtics fans, get to your senses. Celtics have over 95 million in guaranteed salaries before any options, before non-guaranteed deals or draft picks. No cap space for free agents. 95 millions guaranteed. So uh, I know lots of people hope Gordon, Gordon Hayward will opt out. I have bad information for them. He will likely opt in but keep missing a pretty important point that doesn't create a cap space for Boston. Boston are, Celtics are over the cap, no matter what happens with Gordon Hayward. And good luck replacing guy 
with 1764 on 30 on on 50 38 85 split shooting splits with mid level exception opt out and resign maybe but opt out and gone no this is about gordon hayward and stupid rumors that appeared do you want something to add daniel Well, again, that's, like you said, no salary cap space, literally, literally, the only way you're going to make any move is if you do get paid to opt in with the intent of trading him to another team, in this case, you know, deep down. Yeah, we can do, we can do sign and trade, but then we're hard cap and we cannot make any other moves. Again, sign and trade in this case would only be if, if Gordon Hayward signs a brand new contract. In this case, if he executes a, his player option, that technically doesn't qualify as a sign of trade. So that's something that they need in this case. We'll just have to wait and see. But you're going to be stuck with the same roster, in my opinion. That's the way it's looking in this situation. I hope that the range does manage to trade those picks for something because I do not want to see more rookies on this team next season after we saw this year. Our rookies barely didn't barely got any playing time in this case. And we need a true second unit to try and give some uh, rest for our guys in the first unit. Okay. Uh, another another thing, Daniel. Um, what did I want to address? Um, I wanted to address uh, to the fans uh, and the media's uh, trying to spin uh, this uh, season and pronouncing the season uh, pro pronouncing the season uh, a huge success. You know, uh, without getting to the NBA Finals. Like I said, you cannot pronounce the season in which uh, you had three or four max guys and you, you was the favorite to enter the NBA Finals uh, in the Eastern Conference Finals and you lose. You cannot pronounce that uh, thing success if you are Boston Celtics. Now, uh, you and I, Daniel, uh, never bought into the Celtics hype. Because we are reasonable people, right? Um, I mean, at the beginning of the season, uh, we didn't expect the Eastern Conference Finals, yes. Uh, it doesn't mean that we are uh, dancing out of joy because we reached uh, Eastern Conference Finals. We are bitter because we missed a huge chance and the Celtics were, and the Lakers will surpass us in the number of titles, as we explained. Now, from our standpoint of view, Daniel, um, I mean, um, the Celtics are a rebuilding team. They passed every single, like Paul Flannery said, they passed every single rebuilding gate and they are overachieving. So the Celtics are uh, rebuilding uh, from the stage three and overachieving team. So from from this uh, perspective, uh, you know uh, the Celtics are uh, having a solid season, you know. But uh, you cannot say, Daniel, you cannot say uh, if you are the fan or member of media's. I don't care. Uh, if you have been saying the whole year long spinning that the Celtics are the true contenders, that the Celtics are the best team in the NBA, in the, in the Eastern Conference, the Celtics have the two superstars, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. Uh, the Celtics will win the title. Uh, the hype was so high, Daniel, for the Celtics to win the title. Uh, uh, so, I mean, if you uh, have have been, uh, if you have been uh, saying, Daniel, that um, 
the, the Celtics are the true contenders as majority of fans. If you have been saying that the Celtics should reach the NBA Finals, then right now, Daniel, uh, when we failed to reach that goal, you cannot say, well, it was the successful season because you are the damn hypocrite and you're changing your opinion just like you're changing your shirt a couple of times a day. And I'm not taking your opinion for serious. If you have been saying that the Celtics are a rebuilding team and that you do not expect anything from them, then you can say that this uh, season was success. But um, if you have been hyping the Celtics throughout the whole season, um, and right now you're spinning that um, the Celtics are huge success. Uh, why? Because uh, you try to defend uh, Ainge or um, Stevens or the organization. I'm going to call you the damn hypocrite because you're not sticking to your words and uh, you're spinning. By the way, Daniel, um, uh, the Celtics are not helping uh, us in uh, that cause because, uh, Daniel, uh, the Celtics are, uh, I mean, Danny Ainge and the Celtics uh, didn't came out uh, before the last, before this past season, uh, with the clear uh, goals in the, in the season, Danny Ainge didn't came didn't come out and say, uh, "Okay, this is the season in which we expect to go in the finals." On the contrary, they said, "We want to have fun. We want to rebuild the culture. We want to develop the young talents." That's okay. Listen, that's totally okay. But uh, if you say so, uh, and if you look from that perspective, the season was successful. Uh, I mean, um, uh, John Brown and Jason Tatum made a huge leap. Uh, Jason Tatum towards the stardom. Uh, he is in the third All-NBA team, top 15 teams in the NBA. We can say uh, he is all-star player. Uh, he's the best player at the Celtics, and I'm really happy about his development. Uh, and Jalen Brown has been consistent throughout the whole year. Uh, this is the best year of Jalen Brown in the Celtics. And when we speak about the development, yes, we can say that the development was pretty good. But um, you cannot say at the beginning of the year it's development season, and uh, before the bubble or before the playoffs, well, we want to win it all. You cannot say that. Otherwise, you're a liar or you are a hypocrite. That's it from my side. Anything to add on this story, Daniel? That's one thing. Too many people want to say that they're too young, that they're too inexperienced, to basically be put with too much pressure and too many, you know, expectations. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not know that last season, pretty much said this team basically was going to be in a and of, co position. of course, Daniel, of course, Daniel, uh, nobody should criticize them, right? Only positive things. Yeah. Because they are too young. Yeah. But if you're one of those people that last season, whether you're in our group or not, if you're one of those people that pretty much said that when it came to the issue of who deserved to start at the very beginning of the season, we're talking, you know, last season when it was pretty much Kyrie and Gordon Hayward returning to the starting lineup, and the intention was that Jalen Brown and Terry Rozier were going to go back to being off the bench. If you're one of those people that basically said it's not right, Kyrie and Hayward don't deserve to start, let Rozier and let Brown basically start, 
in this case, and you make Irving and Hayward earn their spots back. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, you don't deserve to give this team a pass. Because at that point, you pretty much said guys like Ellen, guys like Brown and, and Mozilla were just as good, if not better, than Kyrie and Hayward, and that they were good enough, pretty much, to play the major minutes that the top players in this league have and to have the expectations they put on them to get you a championship. If you're one of those people that, at the end of the season, pretty much said, I want to get rid of Kyrie, I want Hayward gone, I want Wilford gone, I want Baines gone, I want Morris gone, to keep Tatum, keep Brown, keep Rozier, and let those guys be the ones to basically lead our team, then you, don't have the, you do not have the right to say they're too young and too inexperienced. Ladies and gentlemen, last season, you had players who had experience. You had players who, took, who knew what it took to win a championship in this case, or who knew what it took to be the top guy on a champion, on, on, I shouldn't say championship team, but to be the top guy on a team of their own. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not that many, we're only a few years basically removed from Gordon Hayward being the top player for the Utah Jazz for several years in a row. Kyrie Irving basically won a championship with LeBron James, and if Kyrie Irving is not on that team with LeBron James, that championship doesn't come, as much as you hate to admit it, and as much as many of you people want to give all the credit to LeBron. Al Horford, in this case, people forget how much of a critical role he played on this team making it all the way to that Eastern Conference Game 7 run against LeBron and the Cavaliers the year that Kyrie and Hayward were out. If Horford isn't around, if Baines isn't around, if Morris isn't around that year, you're not likely to get to Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Final back then when Jalen Brown is in his second year and Tatum is a rookie. So I think it's time that you stop acting like you said, you know, like a bunch of damn hypocrites and basically man up, woman up, however you want to put it, and basically put the, and, and start treating these guys with the exact same way that you wanted to treat the other players on this team and treat them the way you feel that, they, that, that you want to rank them pretty much. Give them the type of treatment that they deserve to be treated with based on their rankings. If they're as good as those guys you said we had to get rid of, well then, putting the pressure on a championship or bus type season shouldn't be nothing in this case to them. It shouldn't be nothing because every, every one of these teams in there that has those other guys, the team that the team helping them to, it's championship or bust for them. You don't see 76 fans giving the 76ers and Hartford a pass for losing. Next season, once Kyrie and Durant manage to play after they're going to recover from their injuries, you're not going to see them getting a pass for losing in this case if they don't manage to win a championship in this case. You don't sure don't see guys like Kawhi, where he's at right now, getting a pass. You don't see it for James Harden and Westbrook. And these are a bunch of players that you all say Tatum and Brown are just as good as. So either A, you, you got to admit, we're still in a rebuild, and if that's the case, we're still in a rebuild, then stop putting these guys in the same level as the top players in this league. You can say, you can say that, that we have a chance. They got a chance to be there someday as a top, as a top five player, but you cannot say they're there right now in this case if we're in a rebuild. Or man up. Run them up and say they're and, and have it in you to say they're there already, but then also know you're going to have to admit if they fail that they fail miserably, and that's exactly what happened with this Eastern Conference Finals loss to the Miami Heat. This team failed miserably. Uh, Taylor Snow just tweeted that uh, the Celtics are uh, third youngest team. Uh, in the NBA, uh, we are also among the shortest teams with 6'5". 
that will make you interested daniel and uh, they are third team in the championship race and uh i mean it is looking um, like uh, success to taylor snow um again uh this is the great spinning and uh, you can be happy uh with uh, eastern conference finals like i said um i'm not uh, Listen, I'm not banning you to celebrate Eastern Conference Finals as a huge success, you know. If you want, you can put the fireworks out there and celebrate the huge success, you know. And also, they are mentioning a success that uh, Celtics, uh, Jason Tatum's jersey uh, is... um, fourth most uh, yeah Jason Tatum has the NBA's fourth most popular jerseys um uh, he is behind LeBron, Luka Doncic and Anthony Davis congratulations to Jason Tatum and Celtics have three uh i mean two or three more jerseys in the top uh, 15 um I think Kemba and Jalen Brown, uh, it's great, but I don't care about it. I freaking don't care about selling jerseys. And I mean, you can put individual numbers as the defense. You can put like selling shoes. You can put selling pants. You can put selling um, whatever you want as a huge success this season. I don't freaking care. I care about the championship. And personally, no championship past season for me. Some fans, optimistic fans, will call me shallow, Daniel. But that's the way I am. I want to win. You know, I mean, um, just, I want to, I mean, you must have, you must have uh, the expectations before the season set in order after the end of season to be able to measure the success of the team. You cannot say, well, we don't have expectations. Then, I mean, to say, well, I mean, we didn't have expectations, so Eastern Conference Finals, that is the huge success for us. Really? I mean, come on. Again, you can, um, you can celebrate Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, as long as you want, you can celebrate Jason Tatum's individual numbers and achievements and John Brown's and Marcus Smart's and whomever you want. I'm not a fan of um, John Brown. I'm not a fan of Marcus Smart. I'm not a fan of Jason Tatum. Um, I'm a fan of Boston Celtics. And for me, all that matters is, uh, for me, all that matters is the success of the team. And this season uh, is overachieving and not bad season, but you cannot not say that this is the successful season. And this is the sentence I'm going to finish this show. And we're going to talk more on our show in Saturday. Uh, Daniel, uh, want to add more for the end? But then I go, <clears throat> situation where I can pretty much say, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a rough season, either for you and me, overall. Absolutely. And 
the rest of our team overall for the way we've been treated in this place overall. <coughs> and I like those fans who basically wanted it to be a season of just <coughs> the guys enjoy themselves, just letting the guys. <coughs> yep. This season, we're pretty much. They're fun. Whatever, yeah, it's all fun. Them, do whatever the heck they wanted, and just live with the results in this case. That's. <coughs> and, and if we didn't basically give it to them like that, you would be know, basically called out for not being true fans in this case. Obviously, in this situation, if we're not true fans, you and me would not be doing what we do with these video chats, with these radio shows, with the group. Heck, if I were a Celtics fan, you wouldn't see it. Or, you, know, you can see their face, but you wouldn't see all this stuff behind me on this wall. And this is just the bedroom. This doesn't include, you know, the wall down in my basement that has pictures of, like, Bird and Russell and all that down there. Pretty my man cave. You wouldn't see none of that stuff in here with me spending money to basically support my Boston teams. And then, of course, I do have in this case on my, uh, you know, the side wall here. Uh, got a guy that's a little poster on the, on the door in this situation. But you wouldn't see stuff like this put in my room if I wasn't truly. And they're a fan to be Boston teams, ladies and gentlemen. So, anybody that wants to question my loyalty to my Boston team, pretty much, you need to take that, that type of, of talk and basically shove it at this point. Me basically looking at my teams, I expect my teams to win. You know why? Now, you can probably say you've been spoiled thanks to that man who you're looking at right now in the corner, Tom Brady, thanks to him, Belichick, and the Pats. Us fans here in, in Boston have been spoiled by the Patriots as they're the only team, really, that's been managed, that managed to keep up and really get the job done over the last two decades, followed by the Sox being the close, closest thing with the Bruins and the Celtics being a distant third with only one championship apiece. You know, but that little boy you might see there, and that's the thing fans have to realize. You have one thing left going for you, Ida, in terms of bragging rights right now when it comes to being the best franchise in NBA history, and that's your championships. You have one championship more than the Los Angeles Lakers. And that could all end within the next two weeks. LeBron and them get those championships, then what the hell can you really say you have available to really brag about to say you're the best franchise in NBA history anymore? One champion. Uh, yeah, yeah. When, yeah but, but we, we said it. We said it, Daniel, that rebuilding through the draft, this is not working and that we are afraid this is going to happen. This is what we have been saying since, to, since the summer 2019. And, you know, we don't have anything to add on that. Yeah. I mean, I have the fans asking me, do I think the next season will be better? Well, it can be better, but most likely it can be worse. When you think about the results, now, if you look at individual stats, and if you're a fan of individual statistics, then, man, I mean, you are, you are, I mean, um, if you look at uh, individual statistics, then you maybe will be, uh, will be happy, satisfied with uh, the outcome of the next season. That's it. Yeah. Well, that's, again, why I'm saying one championship, ladies and gentlemen. 
you've gotten us only one championship in since 1987, pretty much, because of course the last one was 1986. But since 1987 to now, it's been only one championship, which we have Pierce Garner, Allen, Rondo Polk, and Doc Willis to thank for that back in 2008. If the Los Angeles Lakers win, which again, maybe they were expected to happen. Who do you think really has the right to be called the best NBA team in history? The team that 17 of their 18 championships, in this case, um, pretty much, uh, or should I say, you know, 16, should I say, of the 17 championships have been gotten back in the 80s a majority of, of, of us fans in there in the group weren't even alive at that time that too I, i'm born 1990 so i have you know so i you know i enjoy the fact that we got all those championships but i didn't get to experience none of them in this case yet our arch rivals how you know as it is got to win several after the after 2008 in this situation and i about to do another and then that doesn't include the ones won between kobe and shaq together and then anything won prior to that you know when we go back to the you know age or you know when you go back to the 60s 70s 80s and except you know all of that ladies and gentlemen it's obvious why do you think so many people basically put the pats as pretty much one of the top teams if not the top team in nfl history because of the fact that they're, you know, them, them basically winning those championships, they, may, they remain pretty much consistent. With this, 1986, and then we basically you know, disappeared. We disappeared all the way to 2008. And then since then, one, one trip to the NBA Finals back in 2010, which you lost to the Lakers, and you haven't been back since. We haven't been back since. Well, some somebody tweeted, Daniel, that we developed the culture of uh, losing since 2010 uh, because we lost in the big finals 2010 and then we lost in the three Eastern Conference finals uh, 2017, 18, and uh, 20th. Uh, so... You can't, 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 you can't count out the Eastern Conference finals that you lost the Donna Allen and company to LeBron and Marie. Yes, of course. Uh, so I'm simply saying, if you're somebody who truly can be unbiased when it comes to judging the situation over there, like, you, like me and you, even though we're Celtic fans, we have to say it when the evidence shows it. In the way, I can say the Celtics will deserve to continue to be called the best team in NBA history if they're tied now with the Los Angeles Lakers for the same championships, and yet the Lakers have been able to win consistently at some point every decade, and for us, we've only won one championship since 1986, which would have been 2008, literally. There's no way you can justify calling ourselves the best team in NBA history then we haven't been able to sniff a championship while they continue to do so each and every year. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I hate to say it, you know, it kills me to say it, but it's the truth. And that's exactly what's about to happen. So you say you don't care, you don't care pretty much that we didn't make it to the finals? Well, you're also saying pretty much you don't care about having any bragging rights over the Los Angeles Lakers, in my opinion. And the Los Angeles Lakers fans, they're going to make sure we hear it from them because we've made sure they've heard it from us all these years that we've remained ahead of them. Now, it's their time basically to talk crap and talk basically and make you feel the pain of basically saying, well, we told you, and next season over, I'll do it. They're going to possibly have a better chance of winning a championship to pass us and become officially the team with the most championships than we are to basically win a championship because of the fact that we're not going to be able to improve this roster in really any sort of way. So, Celtic. Unless, 
unless Danny Ainge performs miracle and trade Kemba Walker and Gordon Hayward for some some all star, which is not going to happen. Exactly. So set the fence. You wanted these young guys to take over the ranks of being your top players. Well, now you're seeing. Now you're going to reap the benefits. Let's make the fence. Thank the, play, thank the fans pretty much that want to think about the future. Ladies and gentlemen, you forget, Boston is not Los Angeles. The Lakers are always going to have somebody who's willing to run to them to become the new LeBron James, the new Kobe Bryant, the new Magic Johnson. That franchise, that city is always going to have that advantage over you where the moment and a max contract spot is open, some superstar that's the top, one of the top superstars in the league is going to be willing to basically go over there and get the spot. Unless the league ever, which this is another miracle that if it happens, unless the league changes their salary cap type situation to a hard cap and makes it now where no team can go over the cap at all, and so that evens the playing field for every team in the NBA to spend the same amount of money and doesn't allow teams like the Lakers, the Clippers, the Knicks, the Nets, you know, and the Heat to basically overspend and try to basically get all the top guys to run to them. Unless that happens, LA is always going to have one advantage over you, Boston. And that's that the top players will always talk to them first before they come to you in this case. And that includes the possibility of even your guys right now. Tatum, I have no confidence that brother is going to stay with us the rest of his career. I have more confidence in Jalen Brown staying here than I do Jason Tatum. So keep an eye out for LeBron, Eva. Keep an eye out for the clock that's ticking on LeBron's career. The moment he's gone is the moment I feel Jason Tatum will start letting the, you know, letting the heads show that he's giving consideration to leave you to run to Los Angeles. And I think the hints will show that Los Angeles, the Lakers, are going to look to pry Tatum to go that way. Unless Tatum at that point completely self-destructs and falls off, you know, the, falls off the pathway or the ladder he's going up, when it comes to being one of those top players right now, and he completely crashes and burns and, and looks at complete junk at that point, you're going to see the hints showing, the signs showing that they're going to look to pry him for you, and he might even consider going in this situation. And at that point, Abel, you and me will be able to tell people, we told you so. Yeah, but uh, you're forgetting that LeBron James... Uh, the ringer came out today, Kevin O'Connor, in which he said that practically the way LeBron James is treating his body, uh, he can play until 40 plus years, and uh, only uh, he will finish career practically when he wants, you know. So uh, when LeBron James finishes his career, uh, pretty much is uh, pretty much is uh, sure that uh, he is going to be considered by media's goat, you know. Three years at least, I'm speculating. So until that time, uh, Tatum will finish his next career in Boston and at the end of career, uh, at the end of contract, he can ask the trade or uh, he can leave the Celtics in 27, when he's in the prime, which would be even worse, Daniel. Yeah, and that's uh, how what I'm expecting, Igor. That's how I'm looking at it. He'll probably stick with us now while he's got that opportunity to get that big time contract in this case, and LeBron is still playing. And at that point, once LeBron is gone and that max contract slot opens up, that's when they'll offer it to Tatum when he's, a, he's officially available at that point. And that's when Tatum is mm -hmm. doing it. I'm simply saying it like that in this situation, that I think it's going to happen. He won't do it now because it's too much money to offer up, and the Lakers don't have the money available to really offer up to him. So in a way, we lucked out. 
But the moment Tatum has, has the chance to follow in his, you know, his, his masters, you know, as they say, you know, Obi Wan to, 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 to Anakin, the moment he basically has a chance to follow in his, you know, former masters, you know, footsteps, he's going to take it. I do not see a Paul Pierce type caliber attitude in Jason Tatum that someone like him will basically say, I'll stay. Because think about it. Paul Pierce, Igor, he grew up a Laker fan, but you didn't see him ditch the Celtics when he had an opportunity to go play for the Lakers. He basically embraced the history of the Boston Celtics and pretty much decided to stay playing for us until we sent them away, not the other way around. Tatum, on the other hand, I am seeing things that I can basically say, him basically going and getting involved with Kobe Bryant and getting training is one thing, but now that Kobe is gone, and at the same time we're seeing him wearing Kobe Bryant and Laker merchandise on top of it, I say it's likely to happen. Plus, Ugo, we live in an era right now. If this would have been, let's say, Ugo, 2000 to 2010, I would feel a little bit more confident. Because back then, we're talking about players who basically kept loyalty. Garnett didn't want to leave Minnesota until he realized the team was ready to rebuild. Pierce didn't want to leave Boston. Guys like Dirk didn't want to leave the Mavericks. Tim Duncan, Parker, and Janelle didn't want to leave the Spurs, etc. Now, the, st- the top stars in this league today, they don't know the word of loyalty when it comes to these certain franchises. The moment they have an opportunity to either run to another team to make it a three or a trio, you know, three stars or a big four, or they have an opportunity to go somewhere else to basically get a better offer. You know, oh, I can get 50 million from this team compared to 40 million over there. Oh, I'm going to take it in this case. There's no loyalty left in this NBA, Igor, unfortunately, which is why people have to really treasure what we saw from Paul Pierce, Dirk Nowitzki, Tim Duncan, and, you know, even, even with Cody Brown. But then again, like I said, Igor, it's easy. It was easy for anyone to stay playing in places like the like Los Angeles, Miami, and New York, because of all the endorsements, all the extra money you can make while still playing for those teams and still being a contender. Playing in cities like Boston, San Antonio, Dallas, and all these other small market teams, players who basically show their commitment to stay there, those are the ones that are special players in this case, and you have to embrace them as much as possible. So... It pains it to pain me to say it over, but until fans start to learn that, they're going to have a false loyalty to some to, to certain players, and it's those players that are going to give them a middle finger when it matters and basically say, "Screw you, I'm out of here. I'm going to have to go, not where you want me to go." Okay, that is the end of our chat. Uh, the last, the last, the last, the. The last chat of um, this uh, season. Uh, I mean, uh, really long season. And the last show of the season is Saturday, 3rd October. Recapping of uh, the season. The season is finally over. Uh, so uh, we will see. And we thank you all for watching us and talk to you next time. Uh, of course, we love you all and always go Celtics.